Malicious Spotlight very quickly became the go-to place if you were looking for detailed, evidence-driven analysis of what the Iran-backed militia groups were doing in Iraq and Syria. So I'm Dr. Michael Knight, and I'm the Jill and Jay Bernstein Fellow at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, and I'm one of the co-founders of our Militia Spotlight platform. Militia Spotlight is an analytic blog that draws together multiple authors who are experts on the issue of militias in Iraq and Syria, primarily the Iran-backed militias. And it's a blog that pulls together both analysis and also profiles of the militia movements and keeps government users up to date. Myself and Hamdi Malik and Crispin Smith co-founded Militia Spotlight in early 2021. Militia Spotlight started when the Iran-backed militias were not actually in control of the government of Iraq. So it was a look at how clandestine groups operated on the ground. Now, unfortunately, those same militias are actually in control of the Iraqi government and selected the current Iraqi Prime Minister, Mohammed Shia al-Sudani. So Militia Spotlight is evolving to be a look at militias in power, how they are working within the government, how they're hollowing out the Iraqi government, gaining access to its resources. And this is identifying a range of targets for future US sanctions packages. Militia Spotlight filled a niche because we were able to publish very, very quickly on the Washington Institute's website. The blog format of Militia Spotlight means that each individual piece is short and easy to read and very timely. And they also contain all the evidence you'll need to make a judgment on what this particular Iran-backed militia is doing and which real life actors it is connected to. Militia Spotlight pieces are always around 600 words or less, and they always have a couple of pieces of key evidence provided inside the blog entry. Because Militia Spotlight is what they call open source intelligence, it's very easy for government lawyers in the US, in the UK, and in other Western uh, partners to the United States to use this kind of information. They have a difficult time getting their classified intelligence released to be used in sanctions packages, but they can use Militia Spotlight because it's fully open source. So typically for a government intelligence analyst, after they have checked their classified reporting, the very first place they'll look uh, for more backup and to see what's in the open source will be Militia Spotlight. So we have a lot of impact at the analyst level uh, within the government. Some of the most interesting work Militia Spotlight did was when we very quickly sketched out how Russian intelligence operators were beginning to work more closely with the Iran-backed militias in Iraq during the Ukraine war. From the very first days of that crisis, we could see the Iran-backed militias beginning to support the Russian role in Ukraine uh, more and more every day, including the movement of uh, Iran-backed militia reporters into Ukraine under Russian sponsorship. So this is an example of the way we're tracking some of the great power competition dynamics uh, which are taking place within the militia space. The most substantial impact Militia Spotlight has had so far is the identification of certain groups who have attacked and in some cases killed US personnel overseas. We've been able to create a chain of evidence that demonstrates a real world individual or a real world group was involved in attacking uh, US persons overseas. 